So Remy the rat is about to die. Remy's got food, he's got shelter, he's got warmth, he's got friends. He's laying there and there's a the food pallet is right in front of him. But he can't be motivated to go and eat. And slowly he's going to starve to death. I've done this in experiments. Now what is wrong with Remy? We'll stick around at the end, I'll explain what's the one thing he's missing that means he will just lay there and die rather than take two steps to go and eat. But right now we're talking about how to cope with stress in school, right? And so I hope this is going to be helpful. So we're going to learn how can you reduce your stress while still achieving your goals. It's pretty easy just to not be stressed because you're not going to do anything, but we still want to be motivated and achieve our goals. So every year the American Psychological Association does a survey to find out what stresses people out and they look at teenagers and they look at adults. So have a look at students, right? What do you think the three most stressful things are? Okay, I've just shown you. School is one of them. Money is the second. And plans after graduation are the third. Now, this was back in 2014. Maybe the last couple of years, things have changed a little bit. There might be some other stresses. But for teachers or adults, it's pretty much the same thing as well. Work is really stressful. Money is st stressful. And the economy, of course, us teachers have already graduated. All right, so these are some of the common things that stress you out. I'm sure you probably didn't need me to tell you that school and the IB and graduation are stressful things. But in order to cope with stress, it really helps to understand the definition of it. And the most common working definition we have of stress is that when the demands outweigh your resources. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, think you're, the demands of your homework, right? If you're given too much homework and you don't have enough time to do it, you're going to feel stressed right? The demands of your homework outweigh the resources of your time. Think about money. If you have too many bills to pay, the demands, your financial demands outweigh the money that you have, you're going to be financially stressed, all right? So this is what that looks like. When the demands outweigh your resources, you feel stressed. So we just gave the example with financial stress. Now you can flip that the other way, right? If you have a big income, plenty of money, and you don't have that many bills to pay, you're not going to feel stressed. You're going to be coping just fine. When it comes to academic stress, what does this mean? So the demands are things like homework, tests, assignments, essays, all the things you've got to do, all your schoolwork, right? They're the demands. Now, what are the resources? Well, this could mean lots of different things, but it possibly things like the knowledge. So you're not going to be very stressed about a test that you know the answers to. But if you don't and you've got to learn and you need to get gain more knowledge, right, that uh, that would be stressful for you. If you don't have the materials, right, you've got a test or exam coming up and you don't know what's going to be on it, you don't know what to do, you're going to feel stressed. TEM, my shorthand for time, energy, and motivation. They are really important uh, resources that you'll need to deal with stress. If you don't have enough time, if you don't have enough energy, and if you can't be bothered to do something, right, these are resources that might lead, uh, if, you know, that will, they're resources that will help you cope with stress. Now, on the flip side, now you're going to be challenged, you're going to feel and coping with stress if you have plenty of materials, you've got all the knowledge, you've got time, you've got energy, your motivation, that's when you're feeling on top of things. So how can we use this balancing act between resources and demands, how can we use this to our advantage to figure out how to cope with stress? Right, that's what we're getting to now. So the one thing you might be thinking is, well, why don't I just reduce my demands? Why don't I just not do that homework assignment? La, I didn't hear the teacher say it, so okay, I just won't do that one tonight. And then I've got that big assignment coming up, but and there's a deadline, but I, I won't hand that in, right? So you can reduce the amount of schoolwork you can do. Maybe you'll drop out of a class or two. Maybe you'll change classes into something easier, a little less challenging, a little less work. Maybe you'll course select based on how difficult the courses are. This is terrible advice. This is really bad advice. This is what we call in psychology avoidance coping, where you're not actually dealing with the problems, you're just going to avoid them. And it leads to really bad mental health outcomes. It's pretty easy to see why. First of all, you're not going to achieve your goals. These things are stressful for you. Homework and schoolwork and your tests and assignments are only stressful if you care about schoolwork because you've got goals and, and you want to do well, which is a really important thing to want to succeed in. You might look around you and see, why am I so stressed and I get just as much work as my, as my classmates and they don't seem stressed at all. It's because they don't care, but also they've got different goals and you don't want to live someone else's life, right? So you're focused, you're motivated, you want to do well. That's what's going to um, 
you know, that's what's going to drive you forward. Now, some people might be really stressed about the big game on Friday because that's like really far more important to them and that's what they're working towards. So if you're feeling stressed about your academics, it's because you want to do well, that's great, right? But don't try to reduce the demands, right? Um, exactly. So if, we, if we're saying we can cope with stress, we're not going to reduce our demands because the demands are there because they're important uh, for our success and to achieve our goals. What we have to try to do is increase our resources, all right? So let's think about time, energy, motivation, knowledge, materials. Now, if you can have more resources, then you're going to feel less stressed. You're going to have more confidence and you're going to be able to cope with these the, the schoolwork. Now, I want to focus just on time, energy, and a little bit of motivation today. The knowledge and materials is going to be different, but you, you know, materials, you can talk to your teacher, you can ask your teacher, you can work with friends. Knowledge, that's just, that comes down to time, energy, and motivation to study. So by trying to increase your resources, trying to deal with the problem, this is what we call approach coping. It's also called problem-based coping, and it's the best for mental health. So you want to have an approach coping strategy. Go to the stressor, deal with it, confront it, direct it. Don't avoid it, right? Now, time. So let's look at time, energy, motivation. How do you get more time? Anyone know what this number means? 1,440, that's the number of minutes in a day, right? I know that without having to look it up because I think it's a really important number because I have, I've learned I'm taking on more and more work, got more and more jobs to do, I'm having more and more kids, and I'm not getting any more minutes in a day. So I have to utilize those minutes. So that takes sacrifices. If you want to achieve your goals, you can't do all the things you want to do all the time. Sorry, suck it up, buttercup. You're going to have to learn how to delay gratification. Wait for the rewards. You can't act impulsively. You can't go to every party. You can't go to every hangout with your friends. You can't watch everything on Netflix, right? Maybe you make a rule for yourself, right? No Netflix during the week. I mean, in our house, we have no TV Monday to Friday because I've got young kids and it messes with their minds and I don't like it. So Monday to Friday, no TV, which means by 8 o'clock, I go to bed because what else is there to do? But that means I wake up at four. So I suddenly I have loads of time in the morning to get work done. Now, your circadian rhythms are different for teenagers. So I wouldn't recommend waking up at 4 a.m. It might not be good for you. But turn off that Netflix, get away from that phone, you'll find more time. And it does mean, yeah, it sucks. That's what I mean. Suck it up, right? Um, it, it takes sacrifices. No one gets to be successful and achieve their goals by not making sacrifices. Look at any Olymp uh, Olympic athlete, right? They had to find the time to train and they didn't want to do it all the time. Okay, now another way to find more time is stop multitasking. Stop trying to do two things at once. Look at the tabs on your laptop right now. Are there 20 things to do? Are you trying to work on eight different homework assignments? Do the thing you're doing, right? Do one thing at a time. Multitasking doesn't work, right? There aren't people who are good multitaskers. If anyone says, oh yeah, I can do three things at once, they can't, right? We all have very limited working memory capacity, very limited ability to hold things in our mind. So do the thing you're doing. It's a great mantra that, that I really like. Now, that's a little bit of time. There's loads of time management strategies, but I mean, my basic one here is you know, it's about taking action, right? And make sacrifices and prioritize the things that you have to get done. Uh, now, going back to time just a little bit, one thing you might want to do is time blocking. So assign specific times that you like to get things done. I block off 4 to 6 a.m. every morning is when I work. 6 to 9 a.m. I have time with my kids and then I block out. And then after 12 to 2 o'clock I go to the gym and have lunch. So you can block out your time for the day. How do you get more energy? Well, this really comes down to sleep nutrition and exercise. So let's look at sleep. You want to have good sleep hygiene. Sleep is so important to your energy. I'm not gonna lecture on this because you probably know about it already, but just think about routine, two things. Routine and no screens. Get the screens out of your bedroom. Okay, if you if you work, um, if your study desk is in your room and you have a laptop, then maybe just put your laptop in the drawer, leave your phone in the living room, just get the screens out of your bedroom. Don't watch TV, don't sit up late at night having screens. It's gonna mess with your sleep rhythms, all right? Again, it sacrifices, right? Success doesn't come easy. So if you want to be successful, if you want to achieve your goals, these are the things you have to do. You have to get in these habits. Okay, now, nutrition. One, uh, two pieces of advice I would give you. Number one is avoid consuming anything for energy. So if you think, oh, I need I need a pick-me-up, I need a boost. So I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, I'm gonna have a Red Bull, I'm gonna have some sugar. That's a really short-term strategy. You're gonna have a, a very short-term 
peak and then a big dip. So just don't get in the habit of drinking or eating anything for the sake of getting a a quick burst of energy you want to eat for long-term energy and the best food for that is whole foods the foods that have had the least amount of uh, preparation and processing basically now exercise a lot of people when I used to think I don't have the time to exercise I've got too much work to do I've since learned once uh, when I exercise it doesn't take time it makes time I sleep better and I have more energy and focus and I'm actually more productive so you know an hour and those from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., right? If I've uh, if I've exercised the day before, I'll be really productive and more focused. Whereas I might still get that, those same two hours, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. to work. But if I didn't exercise the day before, then I just I'm not as productive. I don't get as much done because I don't have as much energy and focus. Okay. Finally, motivation. We come back to Remy the Rat. Why did Remy the Rat just not be bothered to go eat, even though he was going to starve? I'll come to Remy in a moment, but first, a good mantra that I've learned and I really like is action precedes motivation. A lot of people want to sit around and wait to be motivated before they do something. Actually, it's a myth, right? The more you do, the more you want to do, the more motivation you're going to get to do it, and even the more inspiration you'll get from the actions that you take. So, you know, this is, shut up and do the work. You just got to sit down, put your butt in the chair, and be able to do it. The Germans have a word for this. Someone, someone German, help me out. There's a word for it in the comment. Uh, there's a word for it in the comment. There's a word for it in German. If you can leave it in the comments, it's the ability just to sit down and focus and do the work. Okay. Again, it sounds like tough love and it is. Okay. You, you are, we are surrounded by a world of distractions and pleasurable things that can fill our minds with dopamine in any, any second, right? But the abilities to be successful and to be motivated actually just means doing the work to begin with. And you're going to learn to love it, right? You go for a 5K run every day. At the beginning, you might hate it. After a month, you'll love running 5K, right? You, we just, you learn to love difficult things and, and you have to do that if you want to be successful. So coming back to dopamine, that's exactly why Remy the rat is going to die. He is a, uh, a genetically modified mouse that doesn't have any dopamine in his brain. If you remove all the dopamine from a rat, they will starve to death. They won't even take two steps to go and eat Dopamine is key to motivation. We think about dopamine in terms of pleasure and reward, but really dopamine drives us towards those pleasures and rewards. It drives, so motivation is the driving force. It's it's dopamine, sorry, dopamine is the driving force. So dopamine is to do with motivation. Those go hand in hand. Now, how do you manage your dopamine levels so you can be motivated and have more energy? I've done a few things in the last couple of weeks experimenting with this after I've learned a little bit about dopamine and motivation, but that's uh, a story for another day. I'm going to record that in the next video because I want to do a little bit more research and write it out and make sure I can explain it clearly. But uh, that's going to come up in the next video. So uh, hit subscribe or just, um, yeah, hit subscribe. You'll get a notification when that video comes up uh, or even just hopefully if you're watching this in the future, go to the videos and check it out there. Now, all this about stress is covered in our student's guide for IB Health Psychology. Um, covering stress and the first part of the book really is about uh, the causes of stress biological cognitive and socio-cultural causes and then we get into the coping strategies sleep diet exercise nutrition all of those things it comes with an audio book um, and other resources as well that might be coming here there's flashcards for every study to help you with the exams as well as example paper two essays all right so more videos um, more resources on the blog and store as well. I hope that was helpful. This idea of thinking about demands and resources was one of the, the most important things I learned for myself after researching the stress units. So remember the bottom line, don't, it's, stress is all about demands and resources. You don't want to reduce your demands because the demands are there because they're important, right? And they're important to you. That's why they're causing you stress. So you want to increase your resources and that's approach, uh, approach coping, increase your resources. Go after it. Go get more resources. Go ask for help. Go talk to your friends. Go talk to your parents. Sleep better. Do some exercise. Get into good, healthy habits, right? It's, it's all about action. All right. Good luck. I hope that was helpful.